People want to understand the providence of their food and fibre more and more. So it's really important for us that we're able to measure what we're doing on our land. We can see it visually, but to actually be able to measure it is really important. Our farms should function as Mother Nature intended them to. In other words, basically get out of the way and let Mother Nature drive it for us. Australian wool growers are environmental stewards and work to ensure the health of the environment for the generations to come. We've piloted a new ecological assessment process called Natural Capital Accounting to scientifically measure the health of the environment on wool growing properties over time. The results from the pilot study were significant. We look at the productive asset of the farm, such as the pastures, and we can rate the pastures uh, on scales from very good, uh, good, fair, poor. We can also rate the health of other areas of the farm, such as riparian areas, the grassy woodlands, and that's an important part of natural capital is that we look at the whole farm, because the whole farm works in together. My wife, Kip and I, we took over in the, in the 90s and at the time wool prices were very depressed and we were carrying a fair bit of debt and we looked for different ways to manage our farm so we went and did a holistic management course and we've been practising holistic grazing management and holistic management since. So we're trying to mimic nature in the way we manage here. We've got a lot more paddocks than we traditionally had and we, we move the livestock through those paddocks quickly so they get a short graze and a very long rest period. The effect is that we're getting the long rest but also the trampling effect of the animals onto that landscape which encourages perennial plants and a diversity of perennial plants. You've got to have a, a set plan so that you know how long you're going to graze for and go into recovery phase and how long that recovery phase is you can get the nutrients to where you want them. As the land responds, so do the trees, so, so do the birds, so does everything else. And this is biodiversity. We're working with nature. Principles of planned grazing, simply, it's about combining mobs of animals, sheep or cattle, into, into large mobs and rotating them around a, a property. The main aim is to give plants time to recover from the grazing event before they're regrazed. That's what we're trying to do. We're constantly looking at species that might be more resilient, longer lived, and they're going to continue to provide the different strata through our landscapes. Our native grasses and our native grasslands didn't need any fertiliser on them. There wasn't anyone throwing fertiliser on them 50 million years ago. Combination of diagnosed crops using husk cropping techniques and, and grazing management stimulated the germination of seed that has sat in the soil for decades and then the grassland over time regenerated itself. It's all about humus, building, build, building humus, which is uh, organic carbon. This is, this is the carbon that's vibrant and it smells, smells alive. Suddenly, this large commodity of wool can be differentiated based on its environmental profit loss and its ability to capture and store carbon and also its CO2 footprint in the landscape. Now through natural capital accounting, they can actually show evidence that this wool has been produced in a very environmentally regenerative way. Now we're in a position to continue in improving our ecosystems here and sequester more carbon than we're using. I think that's, that's a pretty exciting story. The big question is, how can you afford to do that? Well, I say you can't afford not to.